The annual ECOSOC high-level segment and ministerial review was held at UN headquarters in New York this week, reviewing the strengths and weaknesses of the Millennium Development Goals, decisions that will build into the deliberations for a single, inclusive development agenda to succeed the MDGs. It will see heads of state, ministers and the development community unite throughout the week to come up with an integrated framework that benefits all sectors of society. The MDGs have helped to unite inspire, and transform. Many key targets have been met or are within reach. The world has achieved the target of reducing by half the proportion of people living in extreme poverty and of those without access to improved water sources five years ahead of schedule. The task of building an effective, ambitious, universal development agenda is complex and challenging, and yet we must act decisively to carry it through successfully. This will require an unprecedented level of mobilization of the means of implementation of all constituencies in society, beginning with our governments, as well as mobilization of concrete actions to advance sustainable development. There is a clear sense of opportunity as we reach this final phase in crafting the SDGs and the post-2015 agenda. This agenda must be people-centered, universal, and should build upon the Rio Plus 20 outcome document. With less than 550 days until the MDGs officially reach their deadline, the international community celebrates their achievements, but much unfinished business remains, like business that will have to be covered by this new development framework. It's a very uneven uh, result. We have seen some fantastic results, but I, I think at this point we have to do two things. We have to put our foot on the accelerator and try and get as near as we can to the full scorecard of achievement. And then at the same time as we begin to turn our mind to uh, defining the SDGs, what comes after 2015, we've got to learn from the experience of the MDGs. Uh, knowing that uh, new development framework want to really integrate three different dimensions of development, namely economic and social environment. Uh, I would be surprised that uh, we would see more focus on the uh, environment side under the upcoming uh, framework. Stakeholders representing historically underlit development issues made sure that their priorities were adequately represented in the discussion and will remain in the spotlight throughout the implementation phase of the new agenda. We have for far too long neglected the enormous economic importance of natural capital to economies as a whole, but also particularly to the poorest of the poor. It is they who in large part depend on a functioning set of ecosystem services in the absence of modern services or urbanization being able to accommodate them. It is one of the tragedies of our systems of national accounting that for far too long we have valued many of nature's services to us with an economic factor of zero. I can assure you that we are the generation that will leave the world out of poverty. We are the generation that will end HIV and AIDS. We are the generation that will implement the development agenda that you're working so diligently on. The debate continued in the later afternoon with ambassadors and government representatives offering their perspectives on national priorities and challenges to the panelists. In the days to come, the ECOSOC high-level segment will continue to focus on the critical issues to be addressed by the post-2015 development agenda. South South News will be following the proceedings all week, right here from the United Nations headquarters. For South South News, I'm Shari Naiman, reporting from New York City.